So the next step in research is taking what questions you have and turning it into something that looks a little bit like this. So this is my methodology here, um, and this is a way that you can kind of graph out the things that you're going to want to compare to each other. So my research was a two by three factorial between and within persons non-repeated mixed measure design. Basically, as simple as it can be, the two is American versus Canadian. So two is the, the fact that one of my variables is country. The other one is type of organization. Those empirical realizations make it three because they have restaurants, corporations, and stores. I analyzed a total of 60 companies, 10 of each of those categories there. So 30 American, 30 Canadian. Um, the between means I compared between all of those different categories. So American restaurants, I compared to Canadian corporations and vice versa. You kind of have a big matrices to combine all of your different spots there. Within is within your same category. So I compared within just American, I compared within just Canadian companies, I compared within just restaurants, just corporations, just stores. So that's kind of what that means. It's a little bit complicated when it sounds like that. It sounds way fancier than it actually is. But when you look into it, that's basically the gist of it. I also noted here that time became something that I just use as an internal analysis. It wasn't strong enough statistically to really look at it um, from a variable standpoint, just because of the fact there was lack of updated um, policies available, which is pretty surprising. So what did that look like for me? I didn't use the questionnaires that a lot of people use and give out on campuses to have students fill those out. I actually was able to find online some archi excuse me, archival data um, of 30 employee handbooks from American companies and 30 from Canadian companies. It was pretty hard to find Canadian companies just because I don't speak French. So some of them were available, but only available in French. And I didn't want to reduce the language down to translating it and might not get the full extent of that policy. Um, I then had to create an objective worksheet because qualitative data can also be a little subjective because of the fact that you are trying to synthesize something, but you want to do so in a way that's pretty systematic. Does it contain this? Does it not contain this? Rather than, that sounds pretty good. Mm, that doesn't sound as great. Um, so that's kind of how I did this. I had a bunch of worksheets. I stapled them to the policies and I highlighted the things. Yes, it has this. No, it doesn't have this and was able to go from there. I graded each of the worksheets based on the following dependent variables. So I looked at each of these for each of the policies. The policy content, did it have all the nationally required items of each country? Canadian, um, the Canadian Federal Bill of Sexual Harassment um, requires nine different items for each business to follow through with being um, appropriate within their federal standards. American policies have about six. So um, I graded those. Does an American policy have six out of six? Okay, they had a 100%. That way that 100 meant just as much as a 100 for Canadian, nine out of nine, um, as opposed to, because nine out of six out of nine would still probably be a little bit higher than someone who got a four out of six. So anyway, um, I basically did a grade so that it was even between the two. The policy quality, quality is a word that's pretty subjective, but I looked at it from, does it contain this ideal policy content or does it not? Does it contain resources for survivors or does it not? Does it allow for anonymous reporting or does it not? If it did, awesome. That kind of gave it one more point than kind of put it above the rest. Um, and then total quality was adding all of the things for both the ideal policy content, the nationally required um, items, as well as the sanctioned deterrent impact. I don't know about you guys, but if I know what, what could happen to me, if I do commit a crime or do something bad, I'm less likely to do it than something bad might happen to me. Or I might get in trouble. I might go to jail. If I know that murder means I'm spending life in jail, far likely less to do it than if it was just something might happen. He might go to, he might go to jail for a little bit. What is a little bit? So having policies that were specific about if you do sexually harass or if you do have crude jokes or if you do make people feel uncomfortable, this, this, and this could happen. So if a policy had that, it got a higher score on that item. There were quite a few interesting findings. I'm going to try to stick to the ones that relate to what you guys are looking at. And this is me turning the qualitative research, the words, into statistics. These are all um, not APA charts. Stay tuned. I'm going to update this um, and send over some other ones that are more APA standard charts. But either way, all of these have a P0 p-value of less than 0.05, which means they're statistically significant, some even that much more than others. Um, so really what I did look at for each of these is the total quality. I compared each of the different items. And if you see, Canadian companies more often than not 
trump American policies. Um, I think that I had 39 statistically significant findings between all the different things I looked at. Um, that's largely due to the fact that I had quite a few dependent variables like total quality, sanctioned deterrent, ideal uh, policy content, and nationally required policy content. Um, some studies are a lot more narrow in scope and just want to focus on one of those specific items. I could have spent my entire research just looking at how specific are the sanctions that could happen if someone were to sexually harass, but I wanted to do a bunch in I promise you, I bit off more than I could chew, but somehow with the help of Dr. Victor and Dr. Hurwitz, I was able to rally. And Canada was pretty motivating. It was a good, okay, it's got to get done because it's two more days for Canada. Um, we froze our butts off, but we had a blast. Um, so these are all statistically significant findings um, that you graph out. Um, and with nationally required, like I said, it's a grade. So Canadian restaurants, every single one of the Canadian restaurants met the federally required standards. You'd be shocked about how many of the companies I looked at actually did not meet their federally required standards. Um, and that could be just because it's an out-of-date policy and they haven't updated it based on the new changes to sexual harassment expectations from the net federal government, or maybe they just don't care. Um, but it should be 100 or close enough to 100 because that would be the ones that contain the most of that. So if you see here, there's some that don't, and that is statistically significant, showing that there is a large difference between those two. Um, you see here that there is a large difference in the sanctioned deterrent power of Canadian restaurants versus American stores. American stores were pretty um, non-specific with a lot of their different things, just generally. Canadian restaurants, were very over the top and very thorough. I think the reasons restaurants across the board between both American and Canadian um, did show more strength in these things is they work so much with the public. Not only is there concerns that a coworker could sexually harass a coworker, but there is a concern that a, a patron of that restaurant could sexually harass a, a employee or vice versa. So there's a lot more expectations to um, the public to be a good human. Um, and here's just some more of this. Um, I don't want to go into all of it. Dr. Victor will also link this PowerPoint and send you my email so you guys have all of that. Just see every single bit of all the details of all of these things. But this is how you make content analysis into empirical research. I did t-tests for all of these comparing like my um, e with equal variance to compare them because their mean should all be similar. Um, to each other. That's why I was able to compare them to see if they were statistically significant or not. Um, of all the tests I did, I ran technically about 180 tests and about 39 of those were statistically significant. If you think about the yield, that doesn't seem like that many, but frankly, 39 statistically significant findings in a project that took me about six months was quite a few, I thought. And from this, all these charts and things like that, you can really pick them apart and see um, a lot more just about each individual graph if you look into them a lot more but i'm going to try to kind of summarize and close up here um and they, they just keep going so some of the conclusions i made just based on the things that i found what was lacking in policy policies and what was very apparent in policies there's some things that you should look for in companies that you're working for considering working for or even that you are interested in um kind of sponsoring or like you're really passionate about um Anonymous reporting should be in every single policy, and it really helps lessen that fear of reporting, um, and it helps wait. Um, it helps lessen the gap between that dark figure of crime of the unreported issues that we have. You should work for a company that has very clear and well-defined expectations of you as a person, because you want to be working for something that you know all the ins and outs of what you should be doing to conduct your behavior, but also how to um, expect others to treat you, um, how to report that if someone treats you badly or that you see that as a bystander, things like that. There's a lot of stumbling blocks. You'll find that in your research too. You just kind of have to fake it till you make it and roll with the punches. Shifting from opinion to fact, is very important within content analysis. So having very set operational expectations, definitions, and empirical realizations really helps. And the other thing is, is I had to be willing to accommodate um, the fact that my original expectations weren't able to be followed through with. The other thing that's really cool about research is that you always want to do more afterwards. Even if you're tired, you still want to think about more things. Um, the thing that I would be most passionate about doing, and if I was able, ever able to be paid to do this research, I would love to interview the employees that work at these companies.